What's going on, everybody? Shane here with Vulgar Display Gaming, and today I'm joined by John Familetti from Health. How you doing, brother? What's up, dude? Good morning. I pronounced your last name correctly. <laughs> well, it correctly is probably like familiarity, but um, you know, I grew up in America. I'm an American. I'd say we used to say Familetti. Uh, my dad, uh, my dad had a thick Italian accent. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, I'm, I'm uh, my background. I'm I'm, uh, I'm half Korean. Uh, I'm back. Like, Half Korean, half Italian. Actually, I'm a Northern Korean, North Korean, and Southern Italian. Hey, there you go. North and South. There you go. You got the mix in there between it. So, for everybody who doesn't know you, I know you as, uh, I describe people to you as like an industrial Deftones, pretty much. Is that kind of hitting somewhere like around there? How would you guys describe yourselves? Uh, that's actually not bad. Um, I've heard that too, or like Evil New Order, Evil Pet Shop Boys. <laughs> uh, I think Industrial Deftones is pretty good. Uh, I think, yeah, a band that I think most people always... Uh, pretty much, like, I'd say 99% of our fans are also Nine Inch Nails fans. And then, uh, but I'd say... There's 90, that, too. And then, and then uh, 89% of our fans are also Deftones fans. So I mean, I can't be like, you're an Industrial Nine Inch Nails, because... <laughs> no, no, I think I think that's a, that's a pretty good descriptor. <laughs> funny thing is, uh, describing bands these days is also funny because you can yeah. like play it with an instant. I guess like here you go, instant, but but yeah, but I, I I think that's good. That's a good assessment. It's just like literally everybody's that like you can't describe anybody now because you're like, well, they fucking sound like this, they sound like that. You know, how are you mm. gonna? It's fucking getting harder, you know. Mm. But I also say, hey, I would like to say you guys are the pioneers of cum metal, aren't you? Uh, sure, yeah, I think so. <laughs> or I think technically you could say you know, typo, typo negative or deftones. Then it comes out true, true. Who's At gonna, least you're knows? coining the term, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I coined the term. Uh, uh, but yeah, we, we, we know. You know, this is what I like is this is thinking, you know, music is a conversation and, and terms of redefine. So we'll find out what cum metal really means in, you know, in a year or two or three years. You know? Exactly. That's why you had to capitalize it. You're like, fuck it, put it on a shirt. We're going to probably sell Definitely. a billion of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we are selling a lot of cum metal shirts. We just have a new cum metal shirt that we just dropped, and we even have a, yeah. a, a, a cum metal crop top for the ladies that we got. Hey, there you go. You got to definitely get it, you know, going. So, mm -hmm. again, I just want to say, your music's often described, or at least you guys described it as like a post-apocalyptic Skynet landscape. How do you approach mm -hmm. like this narrative to your uh, storytelling in your music? You know, is there anything so, uh, you want to do? Uh, well, we just for us, it's Sonic and like. The joke we've made is like we were always making this like uh, futuristic sci-fi dystopian music, and like the current times have caught up to the music. You know, we are the sci the cyberpunk future. It's just like kind of whack, <laughs> <laughs> or like or kind of corny. Uh, but um, so like uh, it just feels very uh, very current right now, and we don't we definitely don't put like a narrative in terms of like this is a song about like a character in the future doing some like sci-fi oh. shit. There's you know some tinges here and there, but it's always it's always sort of meant to be. You know, kind of grounded and emotional, and uh, and not um, yeah, not not like a fucking story you read like a, like some oh, of course, of course. I mean, music's all interpretive to whoever's listening to it anyway. Of but, course, of course. That's why I think it's great to not uh, explain lyrics too much. It's like the the meaning someone gets out of it is, is more important. You know, like you create the meaning. Yeah, it's just more or less your guys' music so atmospheric. It definitely fits that tone and space you know but then it's just there's so much other stuff you've done too where you can put it to anything like fuck you can put it to a horror movie or fucking whatever you know yeah thanks man <laughs> I appreciate it yeah there, I mean we have like a you know a cinematic um <laughs> bent to our stuff that, that we were into you know? oh yeah oh actually someone said a descriptor someone's like hey this is like T2 metal and I'm like that's pretty good <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly like the post Skynet landscape this is what we're yeah, listening yeah. to you know but again it's just there's so many layers to your music. Again, with your you're hitting as me as a metalhead. I'm like shit. You guys are hitting the metalhead scene. You're hitting so many heavy things. I can see this being really hard to play live, especially now that you've gone more electronic with your music. You're like fuck. Now we got all of this stuff here. Is there any experiences that you've had where you're just like fuck? This is well. We got like all these cables, all this stuff running everywhere. <laughs> uh, definitely. And we used to have a lot of technical issues. We're so much better now. We've got a really streamlined, so we, we're doing it hard. The funny thing that's hard for us is the metal stuff because we're not shredders. So like, uh, and there's and all the all the metal shit on this on this album is played by other dudes. <laughs> so the metal's the pain in the ass. Where we're like, like you know, like uh, we have not figured out how to play Show the Star Alive because it's like. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> so you got Willie Adler yeah. from Lamb of God playing that intro, right? 
Yeah, so it's like, we're not playing that on this tour. People are going to be pissed. But, like, I don't know what to tell you. We can't. <laughs> 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 That's, like, one of my favorite songs off the fucking yeah. album. Anyway, you know, I'll just plug this in right now. Rat Wars. Killer fucking album. Absolutely love it, dude. Fucking great, great stuff there. You know, but, again, you're just like what we said. It's just some of these things are kind of hard to translate over to the live area, you know? Mm hmm. Oh, well, you know, you adapt them. You, you, you can. It's okay if the live version is different, too. You know, it's one of my oh. favorite bands, like live. It's just like, there's, you know, it's just different. Uh, but uh, we're pretty much, it's, it's good. This, this show's great. I hope you come see us. I don't know what city you're in. But, uh, uh, I'm in LA. I'm definitely going to try to hit it the Ventura one this coming weekend. Okay, yeah, you're going to have to because that's the warm up show, but uh, the yeah. LA sold out. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I've screwed up on that one, but I'll also catch you guys at Sick New World, too. Oh, oh we're not playing this year. Oh, you're not? No. I'll, I'll be, uh, it's funny. We're, yeah, you were. Uh, I can't, I can't spill the beans, but we're we're gonna be opening for a band on that on that. So I might just be there. I might just go just to hang out. Oh, so I thought I saw, I swear I saw you guys listed. We played last, last year. year. I know you guys were there last year. Yeah. But we were overlapped with somebody else. I hate that. The oh, festival we should not. We played we played the same time as Corn. Yeah, that that festival should Blair. not have been one fucking day. It, that's that's the idea though. It's like you overpack a festival with so many great acts. You have to you have to do it. It's made to only sell out. They can only make money if it sells out. It sells out in like an hour. You know. Yeah, it's just kind of frustrating when there's all those festivals where you're like, fuck, I gotta, like, schedule my time. Like, great, like, six bands are playing all at once that I want to see. Yeah, that was the thing. Sick New World, I basically had, like, a clipboard, and then I was, like, <laughs> I saw, like, a song of all these bands. I'm like, you know, I'm actually not enjoying myself right now. I'm, like, working. I'm, like, working to, to like, I gotta see one song of Cold Chain. I gotta see one <laughs> song, of, you know. Or... Yeah, that was kind of frustrating. But again, talking about all of this, this, you guys had so many collaborations with, like, what shit? You got Lamb of God, you got Godflesh, Poppy... Deftones, even the body, nine inch nails, and I, I know you're a huge like Godflesh fan. How is even just working with that one or any of well, them? Well, so Godflesh, we didn't really didn't like work with it. It was just a sample. Yeah, uh, but um, but, but I got it. But uh, Earache Records. So uh, making Rat Wars, I was listening to tons of early '90s Earache and watching all the documentary stuff, just really getting into it. So uh, Godflesh was just like uh, so we were listening to the whole time, and then uh, I met uh, Broderick at. Hellfest, and I was like, hey, man, and we were drinking. I was like, can I sample you? And he's like, oh, fuck yeah, go ahead, dude. And he's like, what song? And he's like, like rats. He's like, ah, oh. it's like Eric, it's fucking crooks. I think I don't own the rights. <laughs> so we had, to, we had to pay Eric. But uh, we're going to do we're gonna do a proper collab with Godflesh uh, okay, hopefully good. later this year. That's what so, I would uh, like to hear then. Yeah, fuck, my, that's my bad. That was total uh, sample right there. But still, again, you've worked with all these other artists, though. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, and uh, it's it's just cool. I mean, we're, we're just really flattered that everyone says yes, you know? We thought everyone would say no. Everyone's like, sure, that's a good idea. That's cool. Has working with anybody like influenced your guys' next sound? You're like, shit, like after working with them, we learned something from them? Definitely. Like, I don't know, I have like a moment where I remember specifically, but there's just no way. I don't think we would, we'd be making our current music. It just, it's, you know, writing more songs is great for you, but we're writing with people we don't write with who have a totally different pattern and just like, and you have to go along with what they're doing. I can't tell some band I respect to like do something again. It's like, we got to just work with it, you know? And that's what's kind of fun and freeing yeah. about those. It made us less precious and made us just be like, we have to make the song done and we have to make it good. And you only have X amount of emails or just like one or a few times you're going to meet these other guys who you really respect, you know? Still, that's fucking great that you're, that everybody's even saying yes and that you guys are kind of like just building up this, you know, reputation. Like, hey, let's go fucking do a song with them. Like, hey, let's go do a song with them. You're blending and meshing with all these different kinds of uh, heavy music, you know? And that's what's really drawing all of us in, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's kind of the thing. Even when we were like, even the early, for, earliest version of the band in my head, which was insane at the time, I was it was really us trying to be like doing something new or novel in the world of heavy music. We always saw ourselves as like part of the lineage, and uh, no one was really getting the memo. So now we got to be really clear. We're like, all right, what's up, heavy music people? Check it out. Heavy guitar, <laughs> heavy synth. You know, it's like this is here. We're part of the team. Like, come on, listen, listen up. And, and people are getting it now, so I love it. Yeah, but the, yeah, I know the structure is getting really heavier too, especially with Rat Wars. It's like, holy shit, this is fucking getting really heavy now, you know? Yeah, I, and now I feel like, okay, we have to find a way to do our version of it. We can't not, we have to add breakdowns at some point. Because <laughs> 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 all the core people are like, you guys don't have any breakdowns. I'm like, all right, fine. <laughs> so, so outside of just your musical influences, do you have anything like that else has impacted your sound? You personally, like, you know, anime, gaming, like just movies, anything? Yeah, definitely move you know like movie scores for sure uh gaming i'm just really big into all that stuff i'm trying to think of like it, it, we're mostly influenced by music i don't want to be too fancy to be like oh you know i grew up in a factory town i heard the factory and i had to make it like like we're, we're listening to music getting it from other music and then always new gimmicks new plugins new tools like uh 
all the new mutant material I'm working on, like I got all this new computer shit that I want to try out and find gimmicks to. And also listening to just listen to all kinds of music, honestly, like this weird ass music from Brazil that is so bizarre and avant garde and so wrong right now. I'm like, this is really inspiring. I'm like, I need to do something kind of like this. You know, this is like very innovative. And it's this Brazil funk or the current Brazil funk. It's like really? no drums and like a guy's voice being like, Thoma, 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 Thoma for like a minute. And then something comes in and it's also not drums. And it's like a synth that's like 10,000 times louder than the rest of the mix. And it's like, uh, uh, it's like the most fucked up thing you've ever heard and you're just like this is insane and if you watch the video it's like it's like hot chicks like twerking and you're like this is, it's like so avant-garde it's just like i'm like who this is, is it the future. uh there's a million artists but this song i recommend everyone i think it's a good uh, uh jumping point and then you can use the spotify recommends okay look up the set s-e-t da d-a g-m set dot g-m and it's like i want to do this in a heavy okay. music context but like the the mix is so wrong, it's avant garde. It, everything about the music is so wrong and so rule breaking. You're just like, this is sounds this like is like cool. punk trance or something. It's just bizarre. <laughs> I don't know. It is so when you first hear it, you're like, like what? <laughs> and then you can kind of then you get into it. So like, I, it's that's really exciting. Yeah. Hey, but that's the exciting time about you know nowadays. There's so much uh, music being made at home. There's so much music just fucking out there. You you get lost. Like literally, you can get lost just in a hole in a search of just oh this band led me to here. This led me to here. This yeah. Led me or to you here. or you don't know what the fuck's going on. Like there's no like trend. I mean it's good for it's good for artists in a lot of ways, but it's also like this fucking bizarro wild west. There's no arrow of time. You know there's no. It's like, Very how do you even jump on a trend nowadays? You're like, fuck, what, what is even Dude, trending? I don't even know what a fucking hit song is nowadays. <laughs> like, like, where's the hit song? It's like, you put on the radio and you're like, oh, these are all TikTok songs. Like, Yeah, it's got to be on TikTok, I guess. That's If you, your shit ain't on TikTok, you know, it ain't going nowhere, apparently. I know. And that's what's brutal, like, because we're on UMG. They got beef with TikTok. We're currently can't, our music can't be on TikTok. Right oh, now, which really? Is, it's horrible. Uh, now, the good thing is we've never, we've never popped on TikTok, so it's not changing our bottom line now, but we'd like to. Yeah, I, I think everybody the, would. The, Love all the kids be dancing and, and fucking go straight. I mean, that's how the you know, sleep token fucking sells at arenas. It's TikTok. You know? Exactly. That's how they got even big from what was it, like six, seven months to arenas. You know, it's tight. I've never seen. I haven't seen that happen since the fucking nineties. You know, it, it's insane. It's that's the thing nowadays. It's so much harder for bands to break through because you have to be your own promoter now. If you don't have good social media, it's it's fuck. Like yeah, good I, luck. You're, you're kind of invisible so it's in a way it's good there's no gatekeeper like mm-hmm. you can make it yourself but the thing is you have to do the shit that's got nothing to do with music like you being a social media presenter is like yeah. a totally different and you don't want to be so you want to like you <laughs> want to you, know, you want to cool. be an artist you want to showcase your music that's a whole nother skill set like fuck now i gotta like do all these posts yeah all the now fucking... they, so for us we, we've adapted and um I don't mind, but um, yeah. most motherfuckers are not are not equipped, especially most motherfuckers I know in music. They're weirdos. They're weird <laughs> dudes, you know? I, I mean, hey, that's what makes the great art, right? Great art. <laughs> Definitely. You want some person who's insane. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but speaking of your social media presence, you guys have killer social media campaigns, uh, as well as even just the promotion you did with the health pack. That's a fucking great thing that you guys got going on. Oh yeah! At every show, you can come to any show. Get uh, get Narcan. We got free Narcan. We got free uh, test strips, and uh, we've always given given a free condoms. That's just the thing we do, you know. That's fucking awesome. That just showcases your your care for even just us, even just talking to me, talking to people on your streams. You know, you give so much back to the fans. It's fucking amazing. You know, that's for me. That's not that weird because I grew up uh, real DIY. We came from real DIY kind of like noise and like punk punk scene, and uh, I really got off when I started going because smaller shows are just better for for a thing. Like a big show, honestly, kind of sucks dick. Like you go to like if you go to arena, you're just sort of like, and like it's just like everything. It's not it's not a great experience. And like uh, it's like, getting I, kind I, of impersonal. Yeah, and some massive shows like it costs you an arm and leg. And you're like, oh, that's that fun, you know. But like you go to a small show or even even if it's a thousand cap or maybe even a little bigger, it fucking rips. You just you go and you're right there. And I always got off as a kid like going to the show and be like, hey, holy shit, I just talked to the guitar player. And it's like, yeah, he's just he's just he's just a person. And it's like, oh fuck, I can be that guy. He can talk to me any show. No, it's always fun just bullshitting with the artists afterwards. Like I've just always had, I just like having more sincere conversations than anything. I don't really ah, fucking get a picture, but I don't mm-hmm. post shit on social media to say like, look who I was talking to. You know? No, I get it. Uh, we have really cool fans. I like meeting our fans. If I made like we made a different music, I totally understand why you hate your fans or they, they're too obsessed with you, where they're just insane or they punish you because they want to talk to you about guitar pedals or something. We have a really uh, unique group of fans, so I, I really like my fans. I don't mind. It's pretty rare we get a punisher. Every once in a while, I get a punisher. I'm like, 
but that's pretty rare, honestly. I, I don't mind talking to anyone. No, it's, you know, that fan connection, it just means so much more to us as a genuine thing. You're like, fuck, dude, I can just talk to him as a normal person. And he actually gives a shit, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's fucking, again, playing this kind of music, again, live in this setting and everything. You, you've talked about having all your pedals and gear. How much more gear have you accumulated ever since you transitioned from, like, a kind of a punk band to like more electronic and everything so we kind of kept everything we've just i've actually reduced stuff on my pedal board because the bass playing for me has only gotten simpler and simpler and simpler and simpler because you know i want programs sub bass i'm just like it's not about it's a do <laughs> <laughs> but uh uh we are actually trying to, we're all trying to get simpler i'm always pushing i was pushing jake to get rid of his fucking amp he finally did we, we got this quad core thing sitting up right now just like i want us to have as little gear as possible no great we have a lot of gear but we have so much less gear we should have less gear than the average band, other than these pedal boards. I would love us to have as little gear as possible. You know, traveling is easier, setting up is easier, just, you know, production. But um, I think we're at, we're pretty good bounce now. Finally, no amps. <laughs> Don't want to trip over all these fucking cables going everywhere. Actually, you know what's funny? <laughs> uh, this is a, kind of our old punky, whatever we want. We just want to look cool. We do not do any wireless. We have cables. I think cables look cool. Oh, yes. I, I mean, that's the yeah. best way you're going to get that sound, that analog cable. But I'm just saying even more I don't, think, I don't even know there's a, there's a dead sound difference. I just think... Pro just, probably we, not we anymore. Have, having, having a thing. You know, we got, we got it. We're all plugged in. We got to be plugged in. <laughs> exactly. Probably now the wireless. I mean, you've seen it now since... So what? You guys been around since uh, 2005? Yeah. Yeah. We have pretty crazy and, actually. yeah and that first album 2007 and then yep. like now it's like holy shit you've probably seen it where you're like fuck this was archaic and now we're like whoa look what we can fucking do now yeah it's funny the, the, being in a band like tech the, all this there's technology but it's like stuff comes the same i mean i guess the biggest thing is just computers have gotten some better everything on the digital like workstations got better actually there, i mean there is all this new stuff like ant modeling back then was like Line six is dog of sheet that uh, everyone uses amp modeling now. <laughs> it's like it's the way uh, we do all guitars in the record. I'm doing direct and using um, you know artificial amp modeling. The tones, you know. I yeah, I saw you uh, recently. You, you were talking about using Portal and everything a lot. How's that mm -hmm. going? Is you just continuing to find new software as well to pair yeah. with like a bunch of shit? There's all this new AI software, not for generating music, but for like extracting sounds or warping sounds and that's what i'm most excited about right now see and then can you do that live like while you're playing too to mix it oh, up sometimes no no i mean i guess no <laughs> yeah you, you you'd crash your computer you don't want and anything that's like uh third party like that it's it's too much of a drain on the cpu so i like a lot of people get off on it where they're like "Ooh, i can live like fuck this up live. yeah like, yeah and honestly for the audience it's like it's kind of fucking annoying <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just gonna say, like, oh, I'm gonna do this little bass line real quick. All right, let's loop that. Let's fucking yeah, keep yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, We're we are. Listen, that that could be great. We are not that <laughs> band. We don't look at anything like that. We're. I mean, we're not. We're not. We're not much. We're not great musicians. You know, it's just like it's just like it's just yeah. the health experience is very different. But yeah, but that that's tight though. I mean, we. I love. <laughs> I love seeing great. Yeah, I just saw Tool. I mean, it was fucking. I amazing, fucking love Tool. You know, um, unbelievable musicianship. You know, that's not us, sadly. Hey, 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 you got your own style. You got your own musicianship going, which is fucking yeah, awesome. Yeah, we, we just have our own thing. You know, we, we play into, we, we do what works, works for us and uh, make the kind of music we make. But yeah. No. No, no everything's great. Hey, I like that's, music. Hey, hey that's, that's all we're here for. Supporting live music is fucking just the key to uh, a happy life, I feel. <laughs> I agree. I mean, life is simple, man. You don't need all this shit. And it was, it's been the same forever. You just like go to a show, have fun, have a beer or two. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you'll meet maybe you'll, maybe you'll meet someone fall in love like that's it like that, oh oh and eat other and then have like a hot dog at the end boom yeah one of those boom. bacon wrapped hot dogs where it's slowly seeping that stent that smell in there <laughs> oh god i love a danger dog like coming on the show blood, I love blood, alcohol, blood alcohol levels x high yep, yep. nice danger dog Woo, delicious so yeah life <laughs> life's pretty simple this hasn't changed this thing makes you fucking miserable just uh you trust know, me. um trust me just just like life's fucking simple you can you can still make a punk band or just go to some fucking show in some shitty bar with a loud band and it's fucking great and that's all you gotta do yeah. and drink like hey. six beers <laughs> hey some and, of my favorite shows have been like house shows you know yes they can be fucking transcendent a house show can be transcendent a show on the floor of a basement that's how we started like playing the smell in la like it could be fucking transcendent just some guy screaming to a mic two feet two feet from you and uh it just it's just very it's just simple life 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 ain't that complicated you know so some of my yeah, go to yeah, shows. Go to yeah. kids yeah <laughs> go to shows what i'm saying yeah my favorite moments like you said are just some of those most intimate moments where you're like fuck i remember being right up front and then 
you know, all of a sudden, like, fuck, now that band's, like, on tour and they're big and now I won't ever get to see them. It's like, I, I love Turnstile, I love hardcore, too. Uh-huh. And I got to see them, like, at a small club and, you know, they signed my album, talked to them, and now it's like, yeah, you can't fucking talk to those guys. Oh, they're, they're huge. They, <laughs> the Turnstile went fucking, they got a rocket that's stratospheric. It's just wild. Yeah. Speaking of weird DIY shows, I saw this uh, noise musician, Kites, when I was, uh, uh, we were coming up. He played on the floor of the Ilk Corral. And during the set of this extreme noise, his super fans were just all there right upon him. He just punched a dude in the fucking balls as hard as he could <laughs> on purpose. And I was like, Ooh. Oh, did he oh. did he sample that guy's scream though? Uh he was currently he had a contact mic was out. He was like, oh. The guy was like the guy was such a fan, he was like, Oh, thank you, sir. But as this fucking cracked me up. Was that the is that the venue with the swing thing going through it or Yeah, whatever? yeah, that's Il, Il Corral, legend this old LA uh yeah. that's where it came up. It was the first venue we ever played and started getting a fan base. It was just this one room, you could drink beer, and it had a rope swing in the center of the room and it shit got insane. You just people just I mean I would do it all the time. Bands playing, you just get on the fucking swing and just take someone out. I'd be playing and a guy would just double kick me from the thing and just knock me on my ass. It was amazing times. Obviously now, you know, like I I I hope they still have places like that. Fucking tight. It was so tight. Yeah, except it just, I love small venues, but they just gotta have AC. I mean, we're in fucking LA and like. <laughs> oh, that place is not AC. Everyone would be sweating balls in there. It was just like, but it was just, just a great app. You just go there, Sean Carnage Monday nights, and you'd bring your own beer. And it was just, it was just this amazing party of just fucking weird. <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> it was the best kind of shows, right? Just like, hey, I'm weird. Everybody else is weird. Let's all be fucking weird together, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, as you get older, you probably don't want to go to DIY show, but if you're young, man, it's great. Just great times. You know? I can't, like, I ain't even that old, and fucking, I'm already in the back with a beer. I'm like, I paid twenty dollars for this beer. My back hurts. I can't get mm-hmm. in the pit. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, <just> pit. <laughs> And you're fucking wheezing like 30 seconds. Exactly. You know, the pit always the pit always made you super tired. Just like you know, just if you're really like out of shape. You just, the second you run, you're like, oh my god. <laughs> or you got those pits. I, I I fucking hate those pits where it's just they overpack the pit and you get lifted up with the audience and you're. I guess I'm going this way now. Oh yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> the 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 the, the, uh, the trample or whatever you fucking I don't know what you call it. And those are terrifying. I was in one for Maiden in the pit for that and I was like, holy oh. shit! I got to like survive this wave of people going this way and then the wave going this way. I always have that thing where it's like, it'd be so lame if I died right here. Oh yeah, it's like, but it's a killer song to die to at least, you know. Uh, yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> what 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 was it? I think it was fucking uh, die with your boots on, actually. <laughs> so literal. Yeah, exactly. I was just like, oh, this is a great song to fucking go out to, you know? So, hey, April Fool's is coming up. You guys getting the wheels turning for any cool merch? That you you're know, like, oh, fucking it, everybody's going to want this anyway. Yeah, it just, it just kind of <laughs> it backfires every time, and we just end up coming with a new gimmick merch. So uh, I think we're going to have to do it over this tour. Oh, fuck, it's really soon. Oh, no, it's not really soon. I give a month. Yeah, exactly. Few, That's I, what I'm I, saying. I, I, I just want you got you, it's it's turning, right? It's turning. Like we're actually doing the body pillows now. <laughs> They're in the works right now. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm, like, I'm just great. like I'm starting to think of what's what more gimmick merch can there be? Like a, a piss rug? I mean, like fucking what? Um, <laughs> what the yeah, potty uh, pads, some health piss pads. Nah, it's, it's gross. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I need something. Just think of something. We'll think of something. Yeah, there you go. I mean, you'll figure something out. At this point, I mean, shit, you'll be uh, fucking merchandising like Kiss if you keep this up. Yeah, the Kiss coffin. Fuck, I'll do it. I, hey, people love giving merch. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I think a health flamethrower and a health mm-hmm. urn to go with it. Like, hey, we'll, we'll cremate your body for you. Definitely. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> fuck it. People want it, I'll do it. I know, right? Hey, so you guys are at least going to, for the next album coming up, you said you want to go... Uh, kind of not too heavy but you're gonna definitely go to d right you're gonna tune down to d come on no so we're uh <laughs> rat war is is the lowest tune it's the only health album with down yeah. uh, and it's c sharp we're capping it in c sharp we're not going any lower than c sharp so c sharp standard uh for programming for the sub bass i don't want it sound like just a big heavy string c sharp's real classy black sabbath you know not too low it's lower than normal so that's uh we got c sharp standard guitars and our regular standard guitars. There's a handful of house songs that dropped deep. That's as far as going. I mean, that's all you need to go. I mean, I think this album sounds really fucking heavy, especially if you start collaborating with other people. Like, I know you mentioned you wanted to, like, collab with Knock Loose. That'd be fucking great. Yeah, so that's the thing, too. It's like, obviously, they didn't say anything, but uh, that's, like, um, <laughs> their drop A. That's real low. That 808 at A, really hard to hear. So that's, that's a pain in the ass. Like, uh, we're talking about, like, work with Frozen Soul. They also play oh. in fucking drop A. 
that's really fucking low. So I'm like, oh man, when I, especially when you collab with like a metal band or something, like, or like a heavy band, there's kind of a math problem. You're like, all right, how are we gonna fit all this production here? I want to add this heavy electronic layer to this band going full volume. How do we make it that sounds good? You know, so it, it's it's a it's a it's a bit of a uh yeah like a math problem is the term I use. But we'll figure it out. Yeah, I'm sure you can like figure something out, like even doing a like a atmospheric-y thing over them like chugging away, or, you know. Or like a part A, part B, but you know the thing trade off. People want to hear the most is they want to hear their sound uh, kind of healthified or with a health element. So like for that, like you know, uh, full of hell, we were able to do it with them playing yeah, a little full slower. Full of hell, that that full of health, that's such a great song. So yeah, there's a there's a you know, like low end electronic bag in the whole song, and I I put all like uh, stuff that we would do in there, and that totally worked. But if the band's like going. The hardest thing is speed. When it's really fast, mm. you can't fit all that shit in there, and you can't fit the sub bass in there. Um, it gets too yeah. busy, and you're like, "Well, there's like way too many layers to this." There's just the physics, you know. You only have so much, and like uh, the main thing we're adding is like we always have a dedicated sub that takes up huge amounts of real estate. And rock and heavy metal bands up right here in the mid range. Mm -hmm. That's adding a bunch of a bunch of crap, like, a bunch of stuff there that's just taking up other space. So you got to be real careful, you know. You got to figure it out. Yeah, it's just all structuring the song. That's a whole other aspect to it. And you're like, all right, you guys play a little bit slower, and we'll go from here. You know, <laughs> it's a, it's way easier if it's slower. If it's like anything halftime, it's really easy to make heavy. But you know, if you're listening to Frozen Soul, you don't want to hear fucking. You want to hear no, no, you, you don't know, want. Like, I fucking love yeah. Frozen Soul. You don't want it to be slow. <laughs> so there's got there's got to be there's got to be a way to do it. You know. There you go. Get, like team up with a Doom Band or something. You know, mm -hmm. or Sun O. That'd be great if you know if you ever uh -huh. heard of Sun O. <laughs> definitely, definitely, and that would be great. That'd be easy, actually. We could, we could uh, guess you that. I think a Suno collaboration would be killer. It would be tight. It would be tight. You know, I just we just sort of come across like stuff we're listening to. It's like if it can work and if we like it, you know, we, we want to try it and we just send them an email. But uh, we'll be starting to do collabs again, so I should start sending some emails out. Oh yeah, I mean, shit. Now that this tour is coming up, I know you guys are gonna do some California dates. You got fucking, you're going everywhere. You have a favorite place you love to hit. You're like, oh, we gotta hit here because they have the best food. Uh, oh, you know it's funny. I do <laughs> love to eat the. I love wherever we go. I want to eat the national or whatever the the, the dish, the, the the famous dish or wherever place I'm going. I love to eat it. Like I'm going to Chicago. I want to go to Wiener Circle. Love that dog. Nice. Wherever I am, I want to get the thing. Go to Philly. Get the cheesesteak. Though we get good cheesesteaks in LA. I got some Philly people here. Um, you know what I'm saying? Just I, I always eat whatever. Or if I go to Europe, it's like, all right, you're in Finland. This reindeer dish is, is the thing. Like, I gotta try that reindeer. So, yeah, yeah. I, I love I, I love food touring. I love all the barbecue too. You know? Hey, that that's awesome. Because I know in LA we have so many places and so many fucking options to eat. It's kind of it gets ridiculous. You're like, fuck. Uh, LA is <laughs> incredible food. I yeah. mostly eat the same like five places. Um, they're all they're all amazing. I'm, go I'm going to I'm going to fucking the Bache at the this incredible Italian restaurant tonight. So. Oh, nice, nice. Any other places you want to shout out? I'm always looking for food, so let me write something down. <laughs> All right, uh, I mean, I'll shout out. So, Fa 87 is uh -huh. my favorite Fa in town. I'm, I think I'm probably going to go there right after this interview. Um, uh, I got to say, Kazunori and Sugar Tits, uh, the two, any any place by Nazawa. Yes, there's a place called Matu in Beverly Hills that is like fucking the Wagyu steak place. It'll blow your dick off. I fucking love Wagyu. Uh, I got to shout I mean, my favorite Korean barbecue place just closed down, um, but they're gonna re they're gonna reopen uh, something different. But uh, obviously, we have great Korean food in town. If you're taking a date out, the food's actually not good, but the atmosphere is on parallel. It's Dan Sung Saw, so that's a great first date spot. Uh, oh, what am I missing? It's my favorite fucking restaurant. Um, those are all pretty good. <laughs> definitely, I got a list going, and uh, uh, fucking, I'm definitely gonna check those out. You know, oh, the El Russo taco truck, right by right by my house. Amazing. Hey, there you go. I always love a good fucking taco truck. I, I'm fucking in East LA, so I got one around here that's really good too. That's like, all right, mm. I'm gonna fucking always go to that. You know. And now you're a huge fan. Speaking of taco trucks, of Mexican beer. <laughs> yes. What do you do when you're in some place and there's no Mexican beer? You're like fuck. <laughs> uh, we have it on a rider, man. Every venue we got, I got, I got, I got uh, whatever they got. I say, give me the best Mexican, line, the you know X. My favorite is a, is a Corona Familiar, but you can only get that in like California, Texas. You know? Yeah, uh, it's the brown bottle Corona. It's amazing. But you know, you can get a Pacifico or Modelo pretty much anywhere in the U.S. No, I fucking always love those Mexican lagers. I can't really drink a lot of craft beer anymore. That just screws with my stomach too much. 
Yeah, it's also the if you drink those all night, your headache it's just yeah. a little too heavy. The yeah. worst fucking hangovers ever, you know. Hey, so real quick, I want to notice uh, when we were jumping on, like I noticed you're a huge Warhammer fan, or at least mm -hmm. somewhat of a fan. Do you paint it all, or do you just like the games or the lore? So I want to shout out my homie uh, Kami Goy, uh, Sleepy Kami Studios from Discord. Uh, I send him all the minis, and he paints them for me, and I pay him. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> hey, I wish I did it years ago. No, oh, that's so great. So I, I, I have a fully painted, gorgeous Blood Angels army. It's nice, wonderful. nice. At least you're Imperium and you play Space Marines. I'm Ultra Marines. Uh huh. Like I have way too I actually much. Feel, I actually feel lame that I play Space Marines. It is the it's the, every single it's too, you know it's so generic. It's just like I just I love Blood Angels and the Space Marines is what got me into it. I remember being a kid and I went to a store and I was like, what the fuck is that? You know. Yeah, I started as a kid, but I couldn't paint them for shit. And then I get back into them as an adult, and then you're like, "Wow, this is an expensive ass hobby." I just spent a lot of money on plastic soldiers. Yeah, it's it's the designer clothes of, of nerddom. Mm -hmm. I think um, nowadays, though, uh, with YouTube, you can actually learn how to paint. I, I had no clue as a kid, so I've been probably, yeah, way, way better. It's a way better hobby now because you have YouTube. But uh, I'm not gonna fucking paint. Just, no fuck no. So yeah, it's I, so I, time consuming. I try to paint, but my piles of plastic is like <laughs> I yeah too it's, many. it's good for you it's a great thing and mm -hmm. relaxing it's just like i'm not i'm not gonna do it you know yeah i just started like an imperial guard army and i'm like ah this is a lot of uh, shit to paint i think i just it's want a million tanks. dudes yeah, <laughs> I yeah think i just want tanks did you ever get into any of the fantasy stuff uh yeah I, i'm a big, big fan of skaven but um the oh, reality of of collecting a horde army I it's just oh like... uh... Like you just, and also like you know, it's just so many minis. So, um, but I have, I've got some Warhammer. I would just buy loose Warhammer fantasy figures because I, I love fantasy and uh, love the designs. But um, yeah, uh, Skaven was. I always wanted a Skaven army. I think just that's just really unique to Warhammer and really awesome. Yeah, yeah I got as far as uh, painting an entire combat patrol or whatever their patrol boxes for Skaven and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, just primed and built, and then it's just sitting there staring at me right now. <laughs> You know, also the more modern <laughs> Skaven sculpts, I don't like as much. They they're so hunchbacked and buff yeah. now. I, I like the older one where they're only slightly hunchbacked and they're more skinny. I thought they looked really cool like that. Um, I love like the Skaven assassins, like Clan Yeah, those are cool. fucking great. Have you checked out any of the old world stuff? What do you think about that? Is that, is that the new thing they just did? Yeah, actually, uh, that, this uh, whatever the fuck uh, it is, the Warhammer Fantasy reboot. I was just like, uh, I wasn't into it. Um, I got, I guess I can check it out. Is it is it going back to the old one? Or? It's all the old sculpts, all the old Britannia. Oh, this is yeah, it's fucking. Oh, great. that's tight. Okay, because I like yeah. the whole thing. I like that they were different. You had regiments, and then you know the other one you have squads. And I really like, like it's like the old school war games it came from. But yeah, this is basically all original Warhammer Fantasy. Okay, that's killer. Okay, yeah. Cool. It, it's fucking great. I love it. I want to play it, you know. I remember trying to understand it as a kid, and I was like, fuck, this is complicated. Now you can kind of understand. You're, all right, you got your regiments. You got to move them all together, you know. Yeah, I, one thing I got to say, uh, Warhammer as a game kind of sucks. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> the models are so rad, and then the whole thing, and like, <laughs> the actual gameplay, it's like, just like looking up shit, and then I'm arguing like, uh... <laughs> you're like, no, no, that was a four, I get a minus one to this, Yeah. And... I, I think one day they will figure out. You know, obviously, Games Workshop will never allow a, uh, a fully turn-based digital version for obvious reasons because they only buy the, these massively uh, overpriced minis. But definitely would love some sort of streamlined version where you can really, really play it. Have, um, have you uh, checked out the 10th edition at all? Now it's one-page rules. It's actually uh, really streamlined. So I feel. I'm excited to do it. I that's I bought the Leviathan. I got it uh, paid it. So. Uh, and I was meeting with a group of guys. We we're gonna all be playing Warhammer and use like I don't know, man. I was like, why? It's like they nerfed my whatever, you know, squats army. And I'm like, oh, dog. So we'll see. But here's the greatest thing: why I love actual tabletop gaming more than I do video games is you can make your own fucking rules. You can. <laughs> you have a game. You know. So I, mean, you... I, I mean, uh, in high school, we ha we I made my own simplified Warhammer that was just. We just made it crazy simple. It was actually really fun. It was just like everyone had three plus saves. Like, Ooh, exactly. So it's like, just to say, you no, can't do all this stuff is fun. It's just like having if this, that, then, or this stratagem change. Like that's what's annoying. Where it's like, oh no, I had this. I, I would definitely love a, a. There's a way to simplify it. We, we don't really play. We, we we choose like when I play. It's like, all right, you got like three stratagems. Fuck the, all this like ten like, fucking deck of cards. I'm like, dude, this shit's way too fucking much. Yeah, yeah, it all really gets in the way of playing. I've never gotten to enough of a rhythm. I, my favorite Games Workshop game actually to play was uh, Mordheim, which is really old. Oh, uh, I fucking love Mordheim. So I actually my, just, my, yeah. So I had my Skaven clan, and that was really, really fun. Um, I got Kill Team for that reason. We were trying to play, and we're like... God. So, like, you know, uh, 
I, I don't like I kill team because you're like, all right, fucking got to do the reload tokens. You got to do this on it. Oh, he just oh, yeah. shot. It's like, fuck, it's way more complicated. We just do kill team with standard rules and make it mm -hmm. way more simpler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I just think it's a lot easier way to get into it with just a 10 man squad for people now. So it's great they brought oh, yeah. up kill team, but fuck, it's just uh, some of this shit gets way too much with all these fucking models. Or just like, you know, just like with these, it's not like, <laughs> hey, we can all read the rules and learn it, but like, it should just, you want people to be playing like as simple as possible, be focusing on strategy and tactics and like, not like this like spreadsheet of shit. But, you know. We'll see. They, they keep refining these games. Though it's been the fucking, I don't know, 30 fucking years. <laughs> I, I I know. I know. And then it's just it's just one of those things. I love tabletop games. Are there any other uh, like kind of uh, miniature games or tabletop games you're into? I'm like a huge uh, I mean, Magic fan if you're into card games. I'm not into Magic. Uh, I, I was never into it, but I got these. I'm going to give these away oh, to, sweet. To, to, to Joe. Uh, he plays Magic. I never, never really played Magic. And I got it was this funny thing where I'm like, ah, oh, I can't. I really missed out. I should play Magic. I was there for the boob. And then I was playing Blood Arena. I learned how uh, recently. And I was like, I didn't miss anything. <laughs> <laughs> just not for me. Uh, but uh, I love, I'm a big fan of just, here's the thing. Playing tabletop is the best. Face to face contact is the best. I play Dungeons and Dragons every week with my, oh, with my a group. I've been doing that for a decade. Um, and I did it way back when I was in high school. And also, uh, I just love playing like Sellers of Catan. Perfect game. Perfect game. I, that's Face a game I could never get into. Oh god, I love it. So like, three people. I used to play like, constantly. We would just uh, we would just get, we just drink beer and like play for like ten hours and shit. Uh, but like, uh, I'm a big fan of Carcassonne. I, I like these German board games, you know. Um, but lately I've been fucking busy. You know, I haven't, I haven't done. Oh yeah. I haven't done much. But I always do DD every week, so that's that's fun. I fucking used to have a really good group, and then that's one thing that sucks is finding that stable group, and then people move away. Like we would literally just listen to metal in the background, drink beer, and then fucking play D and D for hours. It, like there'd be like the, six, seven it, hour sessions. That's it, it's the best thing <clears> to drink beer. It's so much fun, and uh, I always been. You know, it's I love D and D. What character you got in D and D? So I I'm never a character. I'm always the DM. Oh, see, DM that's fucking awesome. That's fun. So I'm like, I only. It's like a. You just like, like torturing lesbian. people, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm a nice guy. I'm a nice guy. I'm trying to entertain everyone, but it's like you know the, the thing I say. It's like it's like a lesbian who only will do it with a strap on. Like like I'm just only a DM, you know. Hey, that's fucking good. My uncle, he's started D and D since like the fucking you know when it first started. So he's always my DM when we do play. Mm -hmm. And just having a great DM that can just you know keep the story moving when you're trying to do dumb shit and rob your friend because he passed out, and he fell down the stairs, you know. <laughs> My, yeah, my guys are do the dumbest shit known to man, so I think I, I just kind of indulge the stupidity, and um, we just keep running with it. It's the, the, the dumbest, you know, thing possible, and we it's just really funny. I don't know. It's really funny. I love uh, it. is so much fun because it's so I know. stupid. You, you ever been stuck on, ever. like, yeah, you ever been stuck on a really stupid part? You're like, we need to move past this. Like, what's we, the we just, best like, D&D you, story you, like, you got? Oh, oh well, I don't know. I don't know. We just have, like, a million. Just, like, the <laughs> stupidest shit. Or, like, we've done the dumbest things where it's, like, because we have a girl in our group, and she was uh, she want to play male characters who obsessed their character with a big dick. We had everyone roll for their dicks, and it was small, and she's so mad. We have to make this whole quest to, like, go to uh, this tree. To, to enlarge it? Yeah. Like... Yeah. Then she got, like, a 14-inch donger, and then, you know, like, oh, just silly stupid stuff like that. Or, like, my, like, the character wanted to fuck the gnome queen, so he had to use a potion to shrink his dick so he had sex with the gnome queen, and then and then it's just this dumb shit like that. That all because we've been playing so long, all the characters have had sex with each other. And I gave them beats for that, <laughs> and just, just hilarious. We've got these all these long storylines, and then they've like killed each other and got really pissed. <laughs> you know. I know I was a dwarf one time, and I fucking was trying to intimidate this fucking like black dragon, and I fucking took my dick out, was waving it at it, and I rolled a twenty, and I fucking yeah. intimidated it, and I was like, all right, let's go time. We're a huge fan of that twenty. We we uh, the twenty and the one, we we push them really hard because it's so fun because it's so silly. And then uh, a, a rule I have, a house rule I found from the internet, is if someone rolls a twenty, I put on your theme song. If you have a combat yes. and non combat twenty, and if you roll a one, I also put on your music. So you like know, yeah, this is your sad the theme song. Yeah. That's and then fucking it becomes awesome. this like, story thing where it's like it's just, it's just really fucking funny. And then it, like everyone sort of picks like songs that sort of fit their character. So and it could be like you know anything a pop song. Or whatever, you, know? <laughs> you ever thought about making any like cool D and D merch or anything? Like I want a health sword. Can I get a health sword or axe? Yeah, like, I mean we were gonna make cool. a we're gonna make a D twenty thing. I don't know. Oh, like, that'd be sweet. I, I think the, the most <clears throat> universal thing with our fans is, is like video games and mm -hmm. like anime and stuff like that. So. D and D is obviously like you know only certain people play D and D. Um, I was gonna do this yeah, thing I'm at Dragon the Con. Tabletop. <laughs> I was thinking of doing this at Dragon Con this year. I'll go to Dragon Con and I'll tell everyone I'll be in the gaming room all day, 
and I'll do one shot. I'll DM one shot. One shots? That'd be fucking great. Sign sign up, come, and then then I'll I'll DM for you. And I thought that'd be kind of cool. Would you do anything like, uh, what is it, GURPS or anything? Would you be like, all right, we're going to do like a, you know, a and d or a style cyberpunk one shot or whatever? Listen, buddy, I I, I'm not, I ain't learned anything new at this point. <laughs> I got my D&D. I got it down. Go. We're, just playing, we're just playing 5e. 5e with all my house rules. Uh, though, uh, one thing I'm going to do now, though, Baldur's Gate 3 is so good. Every change Baldur's Gate 3 has made to combat and to the rules are ten times better. So uh, I want to try. I'm trying to implement as many of the Baldur's Gate three rules changes. I need like a fucking PDF of all the rules changes. They're amazing. Hey, you start slowly working on it while you're on tour, and then by the time you get there, you're like, "Cool, I got my whole fucking rule sheet that I even made." You know, there's got to be someone who's done it already. But um, oh. everything that everything that Baldur's Gate three does with the combat is so great. You know, speaking of Baldur's Gate, like fuck, you can lose so much time in that game. You know, <laughs> I, I put a lot of time. <laughs> I've, I've been busy, so I can't play. I still have a beat. Actually, shout out Larian Studios. These guys are really cool. Check this out. Ooh. They gave, oh, they, uh, they that's gave me the fucking edition. That's the Mind Flayer statue? Very cool. That's fucking nice awesome. Hell yeah. Yeah, I know I've been playing, like, especially when I was, like, traveling or whatever, flying, playing on my Steam Deck, the fucking Baldur's Gate. It's always fun to get lost in that. Totally. That's what I uh, plan to do on this tour. Uh, play, I'm bringing my Steam Deck, playing, playing, uh... I got, I got to fucking beat Baldur's Gate 3. You know, uh, on tour, we were on tour all year. I, you know, I played the majority of Elden Ring on the Steam Deck. Just no internet connection, just like this in the hotel. So, also keeps you out of trouble. Hey, you stoked for the new DLC coming out for Elden Ring? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> That's the thing nowadays. It's like, I don't know, you can see behind me, I, I collect arcades. I have a shit ton going down this way. Neo uh-huh. Geo is probably one of my favorite systems. All the Metal Slug games, all of that. It's nice. like, I... Fuck, I don't have the time to put into some of these games nowadays. That's why I still love my arcades. You sit there, play them 10 minutes, and you're happy. Yeah, like, uh, because, you know, I use, like, the MAME on the computer. Mm -hmm. I can play all my old arcade favorites, and, like, you can beat them in two hours. Yeah, that's That's what, that fucking, I have a custom (laughs) alien machine there with a huge alien on top, and can't see it, but there's a face hugger. My buddy built this whole machine for me, and that has, like, you know, 10 or 20,000 games on it. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I fucking, I don't know, I just love arcades. I fucking Super Nintendo. I love all those retro games. Do you have a classic game that you fucking loved and you still go back to every once in a while? Uh, I don't go back, but I, I you know, I love, I love all the old arcade games. I, I was obsessed with the Dungeons & Dragons arcade machine. Oh, uh, ta- as a kid, the both ta- of them, Shadow of Mastara and Tower Doom. Tower yeah, Doom. Tower Doom. Because I would go to, as a kid, I really date myself, I, I would go to the arcades they used to have them. And, um... They had the free play section. You know, you'd pay the, the Nickel City. You'd pay a, 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 a admission fee, which is a dollar seventy-five. And then, uh, and then you play for nickels. And if you ran out of fucking nickels, you just go to the free play. And Tower of Doom was the free play. You just beat it, and I beat it every time. It's fucking amazing. I, I love that. So that system, that game, that board is a CPS2 system, and that's why I love um, this machine over here, this Japanese one, because you could just take those boards and you swap those boards out. So I'm currently looking for a, a, you know fucking D and D one and two. Nice. They're just fucking great, fucking fun games. You I don't like, just uh, you don't want to just emulate them on a, a computer. I, there. I spent money on these original carts. Like I have what yeah, yeah. fucking um, I have like twenty eight Neo Geo games. You know all the Metal Slug games because they're cartridges. Yeah, totally. They're like no shit Nintendo cartridges. So you yeah, just yeah, swap yeah. them out. And uh, have you ever heard of this game Gan Ryu? No. It's an old school game. Check it out. It's like uh, if you ever heard of Shinobi, kind of mm-hmm. like you're a ninja walking around. Well, it's like SNK's version of that. And fuck, we, me and my buddy pick up these machines. We lucked out and got it in this lot. And that game alone's like nine hundred dollars, and we got it for like you know, with a shit ton of games. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's <clears throat> simpler times, you know. Yeah, simpler times. Uh, however, simpler I gotta games. say, I'm, I'm most excited about current video games. It's, it's like all the shit now. It's like the stuff we were dreaming <laughs> of as kids, you know. And uh, Elden Ring is the shit. So I'm, I'm very excited. Oh. I gotta beat Baldur's Gate three. Just the time for. I only need one a game at one game a year at this point. They're so fucking long, so it's like I'll finish Baldur's Gate three, and then I'll play Elden Ring DLC all year. I mean, we and could tell that you love yeah. uh, anything from software. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, they're the best. Uh, but um, uh, uh, there's all, I mean, I'm playing Helldivers two right now with friends, so like a good co-op game. I've uh, there's been all, playing a lot always, of that. I love a lot of indie games. Uh, apparently, this game what's called like Bol- Bolero, Bolero, Bolar. It's like a. Mm. Good, it's like a uh, roguelike deck builder with this. Oh, Balatro. It's supposed to be fucking my. Oh, is it like um? What was that other cow? Tower of Tower of something, that other tower card game, the indie one. And then there was that other card one. Fuck, like, it's slipping my tongue right now. Um, fuck. But no, the indie game scene is great. Have you seen the game Harold Halibut? Uh-uh, uh-uh. It's an entire stop-motion game 
that's been taking like six years. The demo's out on Steam. It's if you like Wes Anderf Anderson films, it looks like a, a whole. It plays like a Wes Anderson game, like movie. I probably and, wouldn't like that, but that's that's adorable. Uh. <laughs> it just they they sculpted all the figures. It's just fucking amazing. Again, it's just that's I, wild. I I check it out. I love all these indie games coming out. Like people making games just like music in their fucking homes. Well, that's the thing with Unreal Engine, whatever. Um, it's like it's it's turning into you can make a game like it's fucking Ableton. So it's it, the temptation for myself to I would really love to make a video game now. Cause it's like it's just so attainable. Like, yeah, a game, sweet two like, D health game, game that would be cool. Well, we have our we have our Rat War survivors that our Discord members made. It's actually really good. <laughs> That's but um, cool. I, I'd, I'd love to get really ambitious with one, you know, especially with the Unreal. You can have these real next gen graphics, like not having retro graphics, having it look fucking badass in three D. But yeah, well, obviously no. very busy right now. We're about to, I'm fucking leaving on tour in like what three days, two days. <laughs> I know. So that, again, I appreciate you coming around talking to me. But again, talking about your game, you know, sidetracking off into that. Is okay. there any series or anything you would really want to work on? Like, all right, we're gonna carve out some time to work on this. Or we, like... if we got if we got offered to do music for a really good game series or a game or a new new game, we would definitely block. We would postpone everything to do it. We really want to do another game again, especially a just a really good game. That it could be an indie game. It doesn't have to be like some big AAA title or something. It's just like something that's just awesome, like cool gameplay. Uh, we'd really love to do a game again. You know. How does that translate over to like making like movies or like I know you've done some commercial stuff or it it doesn't know. actually it's funny uh, we try to get an agent because we're like hey we we have all these game credits you know are there you know we have friends who score for netbook shows or whatever but you know we'd like to get more work and they're just like yeah that does nothing we're like what do you mean it's like well it's like we scored a game that had a budget of over a hundred two hundred million dollars or whatever and they're like uh yeah that still means zero in the film industry but like wow. They're like, yeah, just did the world. I'm like, oh, well, fuck, fucking shit, man. <laughs> what do you prefer working on? Would you rather do a game or a movie? Or you're like, you fuck, know, I'll take anything. Well, we always <laughs> dreamed of doing a movie because, you know, growing up great movies. But um, I think at this point, I kind of would actually rather do a really good... I would love to do some kind of RPG. Obviously, the only thing, the, the most... Uh, what's that called? Uh, what's the regular ass word I'm looking for? The most appropriate thing for us it would be something as uh, a sci-fi or action. But... Um, but yeah, we would like to just, I don't know, just a good game. We'd be very excited to do again. Actually, right now we're very we're very busy right now. Like, the band is really firing. But the right project came along. We, we definitely get to play. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In between touring, it's just those kind of stopgap things. We're like, fuck it. Let's just try to segue off into this for a bit. Well, usually, and in our experience, we do an indie score. Like, it's just like, you got to block that time. It's a law, endless. you got to do so much music and back and forth. And, like, you can't, you can't tour. So we would, it would be like, if it's a big, big enough game, it's like we just take a year off. And just be yeah, like how long? Oh, damn! It would take. I was just gonna ask, how long does it usually take to score I mean, a game? You have to wait Max for them to finish it. Yeah, how long did Max Payne take? It was over a year. Oh, you know, uh, most movies when they're done happening, it's like you just do it over like three months or two months. Um, but because they're still done. making the game, and you're like, fuck, we gotta watch them play. Well, also, the game is just way longer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the game's hours and hours, and then also that music's interactive, and you know, who knows. Oh yeah, if you do this, this this tune comes up or this fucking thing. Yeah, it's like if X men die, you know, if the music goes down a notch or goes up a notch, you have these interactive stems. That's how we do it for Max Payne. It's all every game's different, you know. No, I know. And again, transitioning from like games to movies to everything and all these collaborations, is there anything that you're excited for that's like kinda like, oh shit, like that's coming out that you're like getting inspired by, like any other new music or bands or fucking whatever? I mean, I'm always, I'm gonna keep my ear to the ground. I mean, I'm extremely excited about Elden Ring DLC. You know, it's like I know it's just gonna be more Elden Ring, but that's and they can just every FromSoft game is just like here's another one of these. It's like fucking great. <laughs> it's like you know. <laughs> do you try to do any of those ridiculous challenges? Where, like I'm gonna run through this naked with no armor no, on. Fuck that, dude. That's, <laughs> I'm not good at these games. They're fucking pain in the ass. Like I'm just like just what I just like about it. It gives it. There's just so much meaning, and I love the art direction. It's like just get through it. She's the boss. Whatever the fuck you got to do to, to win, you got to do it. Just do it, you know? Um, yeah. I so think... Elden Ring did something really genius by just, like, making it this, like... Open world kind of... Well, just, it's just fun. Want. It's just like, oh, you can't be the boss? Just go go have fun grinding. And, and yeah. people, that's, well, that's what gamers have always wanted. Although I do love... Though it drives me insane. It's just, like, the old from school from soft. You just hit a wall and, like, you have to be the boss, right? God. Like damn. those old school Demon Souls and then... I started, from, I, I started from Demon's Souls. That game was so hard. I was like, fuck. I just loved when they introduced the fact of you could watch other people die, and then there's people who would troll people, but, like, yeah. you know, follow their ghosts. Like, oh, you can go this way. It's like, cool. And then, what the fuck? 
die. That, that, <laughs> even though that's been present in all the games, only in Demon Souls were you actually like using it. Like, yeah. uh, I remember using it and reading the messages. And, uh, well, messages always are important, but like seeing the ghosts and like using them, that was really useful in Demon's Souls. And every game since, like, it's just this add on. Like, it has never like come into the gameplay. But I just really remember Demon's Souls. Like, uh, when I first played that game, I was like, this is incredible. I've never played any RPG like this. Ever, I, you know? Again, I just remember people writing fucked up messages like, go, oh, go turn left or go do yeah, this. Yeah. And like, ah. <laughs> also, the, inv- the invasions, uh, the invasions were uh, hilarious. Like, uh, in that game because you could also in Demon's Souls because they'd, they'd spawn at the same spot you just run back to the map and just wait for them to show up and just like, kill them the second they appear I was laughing my ass off every time yeah that's one thing I just like I'm like fuck I gotta turn off multiplayer on this you know same with like yeah, do you, yeah. you ever do that in Elden Ring go screw with other people or you're like oh, I uh, try no, to be nice I, I, I never <laughs> invade I, I'm, I'm, I'm very nice I've never invaded anyone ever um, I, just, I just like uh, no it's not, it's not that guy it's not that guy <laughs> that's great that's great. Anyway, I just want to say, uh, so you got the tour coming up. Any other promotions you got coming up that you want to shout out? Any other bands that you think that are up and coming to the scene that you enjoy? That you're like, hey, this band, everybody go check them out. Um, I've been. I like to shout out these. This, I like this whole this cyber grind movement. Weirdest shit ever. Um, like just kind of bringing it back. It like brings it back to being a kid. Uh, just like when kids making kids making the same music in the 2000s and shit. And it's like very much like a DIY insane you know, music spirit. I like this band Blind Equation. Like the guitar, <laughs> grindcore, uh, guitar, guitar, cool. grindcore. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, real emotional cybergrind, they call it. Um, and uh, Bajalvin, and uh, there's a label called Big Bunny Cybergrind, and just that whole thing is very fun. A uh, bunch of a bunch of young goofballs doing some silly shit. Uh, so I'd like to shout them out. And um, I mean, we're busy. We have a lot of stuff cooking. I just can't spill the beans. Oh, of course, of course. If, if you're listening to this, uh, you know, I don't know if you're some heavy metal guy. Come to our show, man. We're going to blow your dick off. It's going to be loud as fuck. You might, you'll probably enjoy yourself. And no, we, really we have a great vibe. It. We have a great vibe to grab the best fans. So, Cut out, But, uh, I'm, but uh, I'm excited, though. I'm, I'm pumped. I'm really excited for this tour, though. Can't wait to go. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I don't know. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks a lot, dude. No, um, I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys this Saturday. I'll probably go hi. say what's up to you. You know, come, come say hi. Um, I'm I'm the most uh, I'm one of the most available man in rock and roll. You can say hi to me at every show. It's not I mean not a guarantee, but like you can basically meet me at every show. I the second the show's over, I just go to, to the merch table and take out. So fuck yeah. Uh, so hey everybody, thank you for watching. I'm joined here again by John from Health. Uh, new tour coming up. New shit coming out. Check out Rat Wars. John, what do you got to say to yourself? Say to everybody. Uh. Uh, 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 rock over London, rock on Chicago, you know, Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions. I don't know. I, 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 I love you all. Please check out my record. Come see us on tour. Uh, great to meet you. You can meet me. You can meet me in person. I'm serious. You can call me. You can text me. Put put my number on the phone. Oh yeah, we'll definitely put that up there. You want me to pop that up there? <laughs> pop it up. And I'm 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 around. You know, uh, I'm the most available man in rock and roll, as they say. Yeah, and the the busiest uh, before touring though. <laughs> <laughs> right oh yeah t- right now i'm a little busy i got a call yesterday i'm like i can't talk about your relationship kid like i gotta fucking, I, I gotta move i'm fucking moving boxes uh, damn some people are no shit just blowing you up like that <laughs> oh I, I talk to fans every day i i'm like if i check for this i have i have long text conversations about like the guy asked me how to ask a girl out stuff like that like i'm i, I put time in i'm chatting there's no ai chat bot it's me yeah that's me your fucking like, overtime right there yeah yeah let's start putting these hours Anyway, John, I thank you so much for joining us. And awesome, man. I'll well, definitely come say hi. I'll see you in yeah. Venture, buddy. Hey, later, dude. Later. I'll see you. Thanks, dude.